G'day folks. Today, hey, for a change, it's raining again. It's like the third day in a row. So therefore the old bobber looks like a bog donkey. Not as bad as some bikes have had. They're really, really filthy, really easy. Because these matte black bikes, one of their saving graces, they never really look that dirty. This has done three days in torrential rain, commuting 35 miles a day. They're like at over 100 miles in steaming wet rain. And it looks all right, really. Just needs a little wash. Anyway, right, to the garage. Uh, just warming the old light up, the old street light. And uh, here's a little side mount. Nice and dry now from last night. It's a little bit better. Once it's in one colour, they always look so much nicer. Now tonight, I've got to get into these little grooves, little areas like that, where they're ripply. You can see them so much clearer when there's one uniform coat. Hence it's called a guide coat, focus. Um, little areas like that, just want to bring up the standard a bit. There's a little pinhole in there, just want to put some more filler in that. Just to make the thing look half decent, put a bit of time in, there's about 12 hours in it now, so so you might as well make it look half okay. And that's the little thing. So tonight it's just a bit of sanding, a bit of making it look nice. Any sort of little bits and pieces I can improve. I've got, I've got myself some more satin black from the favourite surplus shop and some more sandpaper. So got the doings, sandy sandy, spray spray. Try and make this look an half decent piece so I can bolt it on the bike. Excellent. Well, let's see what happens next. Okay, just a midway point getting through these little high spots and just gradually making it smoother but the reason I just wanted to show you this look at that that little river running down the side this was all flooding around here so I just dug this out of the out of the gravel little river all the way down check that out it's been like that for three days Noah's going to float by in a minute say come on everyone <laughs> okay back to work so just going to carry on with this really this is a bit of rubbing and spraying and rubbing and spraying it's not a very interesting one I'm afraid but I hope to have this in the first coat of satin black tonight so bear with me I'm going to give this another little go through get through all the little spots see you again in a minute all right it's about an hour or so later I rubbed it down to a point where uh, I could see exactly where I needed to put filler and so on. And I've now moulded that completely. Uh, it looks a bit ugly as usual. Done nothing on that side because just don't need to. That's going to have a plate stuck to it. You won't see it. Um, on this side, I've just moulded all these bars in so they're completely blended. Um, built proud on that so I can just get that a nice 45 degree chamfered angle. So they'll look half decent like it's got a thicker body to it and they'll stop it flexing. Uh, and blended that whole welded section in. So that's just literally been blended completely and I'll rub that down when it dries. Oddly enough, last night when I put filler in, it dried in about 45 minutes. Maybe it's something to do with this moisture, the fact that it's monsooning. Only just stopped raining after about five hours. Floods everywhere, so. I don't know if this is gonna set. I'm gonna see. Let's go and make a cup of tea for now. Give that some time to dry. And then I can just start knocking that back in time to get the paint on it. So let's see how that dries out. And it has. There we go. Nice and sandable. Let's get rubbing.
that's pretty much. Let's bring you down. That's pretty much what I'm looking for. I've uh, blended all that nicely now. You can't feel any of those welds. These edges are all lovely and smooth and blended. And now it's got to the point where there's really no more to be rubbed out without the risk of going too low. So the next thing is, uh, as always, shoot over a guide coat. I'm going to put a very thin load of primer on, probably two coats just to cover the metal. And then I'm going to put uh, a few coats of satin black on. And there's a reason for that, because I want to rub the satin black back. It'll be two guide coats, effectively. It'll be the satin black, then through to the white, then through to the metal, so I can tell where I'm going. And it gives me a good guide of how high and low points are, just to get it nicer. Um, it's not going to be seen a great deal. It's going to be kind of down there when you're driving along. You won't see that close up unless I've just run someone over and they're looking up at it. So really I'm not too bothered, but that's nice now. You can't really feel that weld. It's all gone underneath there. So that's nice, right? I'm going to set up the little spray booth and uh, get uh, some primer over it and some satin black. Okay, I'm going to get ready to start spraying this in a minute. But just before I do, um, one of you guys... Whoops, sorry. One of you guys emailed me and said, uh, what's, what's a tack coat for? And I've mentioned it a few times. And I guess if you've never done painting before, then there's something about uh, rattle cans that uh, sometimes even the professional paint guys don't really get to deal with because they deal with proper paint in a proper spray gun. The rattle cans are very weird. If you consider the average rattle can, there's probably, I guess, about that much paint in it maybe an inch in the bottom. That's paint as in the thick solid material that comes to the professional guys in a litre tin. That actual thick stuff you can brush. There's about that much. That's it. Then there's probably about that much thinners. And then at the top, that's all air space. Just pressure to get it squirted out. So there really isn't a lot in these things. And they behave in a funny way. Um, the, the paint itself is air dried evaporation type paint. There isn't a hardener in it. And it works very differently to... Uh, proper paints. Uh, so I just want to sort of qu cover this very quickly. When um, uh, the reason you have a tack coat, that's the surface of your material. Um, if you can see this, the if you put a big heavy coat of paint on, the blobs of material, the paint blobs of material, will just build up too quickly, like this, and then eventually, as you get a big heavy layer, apart from runs and curtains, it can fracture down through the layers, effectively making a pinhole. So when you look at the surface, you get these little fish eyes all over it because it's just not sticking to the surface. The reason we use a tack coat is if there's your surface, you spray a very light coat, very small globules of paint, quite wide apart. So you pass quickly over the pipe, over the part, and you just put a mist over it. And the idea is that the little particles space out. And as they dry, the, the capillary action sucks them together like this and they effectively form a skin and that sticks and it's a completely full skin, it's an impervious skin and then you can let that dry and you'll see it goes very flat, very solid. So the idea of a tack coat is you spray it on, the little tiny particles of paint stretch out and touch each other. There's usually a gap between them, you can sort of see the, the base of the material through them, it's kind of translucent and the idea is the little tiny spray atomized particles stretch out, they, the capillary action means that they touch each other and they form a very thin skin. And while they're still tacky, that skin is stuck to the surface, but it's a completely unified skin. And then that dries and it almost forms a bond. That's why we put a tack coat on, because it prevents the next coat from reacting or from running or from blobbing up and forming little fractures down to the base. That's basically what it's about. I'm not a professional paint guy, but I know I've done hundreds of paint jobs with rattle cans and I know for a fact that's the right way to make it work. So if you can have a little go at it, it's a very light tack coat first. Just dust it over so you can still see through it and then just leave it. And it needs about four or five minutes. And once that's done, you come back to it. If you touch it and it's tacky, it's a tack coat. Once it's tacky, then you can spray over your first half decent coat. Then the third coat, that can be a bit thicker and you can start to lay it up properly. With a proper spray gun, you can just blast it on straight away because it's got chemicals, hardeners that make it actually set. 
This stuff hasn't. It's incredibly volatile, it's difficult to use, which is why you don't usually get very good results. But if you take your time and you practice, you should get a good result. So I'm going to put a tack coat on this, and then perhaps one or two coats of primer, so that's all white. When it's done, about five, ten minutes after that, I'm going to put one or two coats of satin black, uh, and that'll be all for tonight. So let's get cracking with the first one. Just a light coat so you can still see through it and that will dry form that all important tack bond. That's it, needs no more. Give that five minutes to flash off dry. spray the second coat on just a little bit more but it doesn't hurt to make it a light coat just in case like a second tack coat if you want that's it time between those actually take the trouble to time it because it's so tempting when you stood here like that you know waiting for that to dry 15 minutes or 10 minutes whatever you choose to leave it for it, it's late now and it's getting chilly as I'm leaving these for 15 minutes between coats 15 minutes is a long time when you're just standing there drumming your fingers so Actually time it and you won't spray it too early. It's so tempting to say, ah, the next one's ready. Whack the next one on, big run, and you've messed it all up. And everybody who's done this kind of thing for the first few times will have plenty of experience of that. So 15 minutes, time it. Simple common sense, right? 15 minutes. Okay, one more cut of primer, then we can go over to black. This primer is just to cover the bare metal, just to make a nice solid cover because regular paint doesn't stick to bare metal. Now it's time for the first bit of black. You can see it on camera, but you can still kind of see through that. It's still semi-translucent, so that's only a, a very thin coat. So that will get 15 minutes and then one final coat for the night. Right, time for final coat. As you can see, you can still see through it. And that's the idea with the first of any coats of paint, just to get them nice and thin. You can't unpaint, you can't take paint off. It's okay to put a thin coat on. If you put too thin a coat, it's not a problem, you just put another one. It's the patience that's important. With patience, you just lay it up thinly and you don't get runs and problems. Last one.
That's it. The pan's pretty much gone now. Okay. So that's the last coat for the night. Uh, tomorrow this is going to be wet sanded. Uh, I'll leave it to dry overnight in the garage. It's now 10.30 again. Another full nighter. Um, once the morning comes this will be nice and touch dry and I shall take it, put it in the conservatory which will be 25-30 degrees all day and that will bake on nice and hard. And then tomorrow I can wet sand that with a fine paper uh, and get a nice decent finish. Uh, that kind of elevation there if you will is the one that's going to be seen the other side will have a plate stuck to it so I've put a thin amount of paint on uh, and that's I'm not even going to bother doing anything to it the paint will the the plate will just get stuck to the other side but this and the top edge across there is going to be seen so I'm going to make a reasonable job of that tomorrow pretty much okay there's a couple of little tiny pinholes in the filler and tomorrow I shall just get some more filler in the old shop and just touch those in gently, finish it. That looks alright. I'm not unhappy with that at all. Looks a little bit better than it did yesterday anyway. Right, so that's all for today. Thanks for tuning in and watching Del Boy's Garage. So tune in tomorrow for episode 5. Take it easy.